AS um, like parents coming together to get married, SS or SS, then yes. that is how you get it. So it's it's a contribution of one of the S gene from mm. the father and mm. one S gene from the mother, mm. and then it gets deposited in the child. So one plus one, two, and that okay. is how you get down with sickle cell anemia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what are the signs and symptoms? Uh, okay, signs and symptoms of sickle cell anemia. Yes. Normally, um, like you get uh, the the signs start to show as early as um, from maybe five months of giving birth to a child. Oh, okay. And that is why um, now they are trying to push for um, 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 what you call it. Uh, there's this testing you do, like immediately a child is giving birth to now. You okay. can test and know their genotype. Yes, because it will help save yes. y you, like um, in future. It you. Yeah. So, so um, from early five months, for some people though, it it, it differs. There's okay. there, there's someone that I know that she said. It was when she was two years old that she was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. Mm. So from as early as five months... she never months, had any episode before that? Yeah, before then. It was mm. when she was getting to two that yes. something came up and her parents took her to the hospital of mm. which and then the first point of call was, okay, do you know what? What is the child's genotype? And then was figured out that she had sickle cell, sickle anemia. cell anemia. So some of the symptoms could be um, swelling, like a baby is... Their, their joints are swollen, their legs mm. are swollen, constant pain, infection. So when those things start, um, because we all know that in a child, yes. it's difficult to say, this is where it hurts. Yes, yes, so of course. So even join this, yeah, like join this. So th I think you that's what, yeah, as, as early as you're giving birth to, when you have your current join this, mm. yellowing of the eye, they start to test, because those are the like, symptoms of um, sickle cell anemia. So if mm. your, your genotype is not known, and you are down with that symptom, with those symptoms. Yes. Then you get tested for 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 your your genotype, so that at least the doctor can make a concise um, um, attestation as to what exactly is wrong with you. Okay. So specifically, how is it diagnosed? Just a genotype test says it all. Okay. Once a genotype test is done, and it tells, okay, you are AA. All right, that means you don't have sickle cell anemia. Mm. You are SS. Oh, yeah, that is it. You have sickle cell anemia. Okay, so what challenges or medical problems do people who have sickle cell anemia face? Well, there are actually a lot. Um, um, so, there's one common one that, for me, I think is common because I, I know like 10, 15 people that are battling mm. that a vascular necrosis. It's called avian. Okay. So, um, it's a problem, like your joints, your hip joints. Mm get down with problems that she find it difficult to work like I, I know someone that um spent like two years and hope thankfully her parents were able to afford the yes. surgery and then she's back on her feet now they could also have um um like chronic infections mm. so you have your liver getting down with problems your your kidneys getting down with mm. problems like your organs just really developing problems because yes, you're yes. prone to yeah. lots of infection mm. you have the um copds like it's a it's a um difficulty in breathing mm. in breathing so that you also have um swelling of your joints because that's like the number one thing that shows it's a problem so um because the, your blood cells when you have sickle cell mm. is sickle and not um like the normal shaped round now that's blood cells yes so, so basically that was that's what defers someone who is just who isn't a uh, sickle cell carrier yeah, your, 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 your blood yeah, the, yeah. No, okay okay i think i should have explained that earlier so the shape of your blood mm. every normal blood shape is round but okay. if you are sickle cell patient yes your shape is sickle so that's where the name sickle cell comes from oh. so your shape your, your blood um is sickle so like almost like a crescent so oh, now I instead see. of it moving comfortably as it's round, it passes through. Yes. Because it's sickle, it gets hooked. So oh. when it gets hooked, they, like imagine 10, 15 cells coming to sickle, sickle cells getting clubbed together. Oh, yes. So instead of passing, it, it stops this way and it cannot move. And before you know it, that part of your body starts to swell. That's the and swelling. Then, yeah, and then that brings about the excruciating pain they yes. are always in yes. that you cannot explain. And another condition they could, um, someone living with sickle cell could also get down with is, it can even lead to blindness. 
Oh wow. Yes. Now because your cells get sickle, they block blood supply to your eye. And we all need blood supplies to our eyes yes. to see. So that can also lead to blindness. Okay. In sickle cell. So there are like lots of problems. For men there's this thing we call prapism. So you see young boys having um, prolonged erections. Mm. So it's, uh, uh, it's not because they are masturbating or something. Mm. It's the flow of blood that is not going in normally. Okay. So normally, sexual oh. reproduction, you need flow of blood to maintain and then relax. Yes. Yeah, but now, if you're leaning towards a crisis and your cells are sickle yes. and they block the flow of supply mm. to your organ, you would have like longer erections. So they, and it's, it's painful, of course. So those are some of the con uh, medical conditions that people living with sickle cell get down with. Oh, okay. So um, a crisis, a sickle cell anemia crisis, yeah. what triggers it? Does it differ for people? What triggers it basically? What triggers so, it? Um, just like you said, it differ like in different people. Okay. Now, a lot of things will trigger, will trigger a crisis. Mm. As little as not being hydrated enough, not taking in enough water because mm. since your cells are sickle you need something to help ease the movement of the cell yes so constant drinking of water helps keeps your body hydrated mm. supply of fluid so it helps but now if you're not properly hydrated mm. you could get down into a crisis oh. exposure to cold and other um, um okay so there are weathers that are not yes yeah cold. weathers that okay so um like it's it's cold in a lot of places now. Yes. And a lot of um, sickle cell patients will get down with crisis because of cold. Because of the cold. Yes. A lot of sickle cell patients. So that's why during the cold seasons, we advocate that they get warm. Like, just stay warm, stay mm. warm, stay warm. Don't expose yourself to cold. Then, um, your emotional well-being can trigger a crisis. Mm. Um, loss of a dead one, loss of a loved one. Like anything, heartbreak and all that could also trigger a crisis. So it depends on the person actually. Yes, yes. And it depends on the, the condition of the person at that moment. So it doesn't matter if it's a physical stress or a mental stress? No, it doesn't matter. Physical stress, mental stress, psychological, mm. emotional, anything could actually trigger a crisis. Oh, okay. So is there any critical age for this? Is there like an age where someone with sickle cell anemia gets to that this crisis are uh, really... Um, aggressive or what? Is, what so, age? Is there a critical age? Okay, I think I understand where this question is coming from. It's it has been a misconception for a long time. People will say um, people with sickle cell don't live past eighteen. People with sickle cell don't live past twenty five. It's not true. No, not I'm not even talking about that. So personally, I'll say personally, I've heard of um, okay people with sickle cell once they pass the age of. Um, maybe, is it 40 or so, once they pass the age of 40, 25, certain age, like I think three, I, I, I just can't remember them, but they're like three age that they, age, age that, that they, yeah. yeah, it's also part of the misconception, so okay. let me explain it this way, if, um, if um, I'm starting a new career, yes, on my first, um, like me being on TV for the first time now, mm -hmm. I'm nervous, <laughs> so if I, if I, if I have, other couple of interviews, mm. I'll get to a stage that, okay, I'll be a natural because um, I'm used to it. Yes. So, this way, if you're being um, um, diagnosed with um, sickle cell anemia, mm. at first, you, you wouldn't know how to, a lot of people don't know how to manage. Do you get mm. So, it comes with the age. So, as you're getting better, yes. you're knowing, if I do this, I'm going to get down with a crisis. Yes. So let, let me not do this. If I do that, I will... So if, like a child now, that he just goes out to play football, yes. and obviously it's a trigger. Mm -hmm. Now, as a child keeps growing up, so management, I would say, helps better. It's not the age. Mm. It's not the age. Okay. So the, the more you're growing up, the more you know that, okay, these are the things I must adhere to in order to live healthy. Yes. And if you stick to that, of course... As your age goes, you, you get better. It's not like yes. people that are 40 don't get down with crisis. It's mm. not that there's, um, there's someone just turned 90 
and she has sickle cell anemia oh, wow. and she has lived that long yes so she in an interview said it was management and things she kept doing and keep things she kept staying away from yes that kept her so it's not all about the age it's not all about the age okay at all. yeah well that's great to know yeah it's not all about the age so. yeah well we're going to take a short break we'll be right back please don't touch your dial thank you come back if you're just joining us this is health matters and liberty and i'm here with zala zamani and we're discussing sickle cell anemia so moving on okay. we talked about sickle cell anemia being managed yeah so how is it managed okay management of sickle cell um i would say is just by strictly adhering to the do's and the don'ts mm. now um nobody is an island of its own of you would have to learn some of these things yes. so simple management things like i said earlier stay hydrated like drink lots of water it mm. helps even for people that don't have sickle cell anemia yes. it's very important you stay hydrated of course. so staying hydrated actually helps like going for routine checkups don't mm. wait till you have a crisis before you go to the hospital mm. make sure you keep up with your um, regular hospital visits it will help like even see something that is uncommon like okay it's just like having a car mm. if you don't like do the regular checks if you don't yes. service your car if you don't put water in your car your, definitely your engine is going to of go course. down one yes. day so that's how it is you you take it with the flow also you you ask your doctors for for you like you ask your doctors for instructions because mm. um your doctor is in the best position he 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 or she already have your medical history yes. so if if there's an underlying um, condition that mm. is coming up due to sickle cell they'll tell you okay this is what this is the best thing to do maintain good and healthy diet mm. and just like improve your lifestyle and of course your quality of life will actually improve yes that's true so what must the sickle cell you mentioned earlier about the stress and all yeah. but what must the sickle cell um, patient avoid doing i don't know maybe if it's a lifestyle or food or yeah. things so what are the things that someone who has sickle cell sh um what should they avoid and what is encouraged for them to do as well okay so like i always say know your triggers mm -hmm. know what drives your crisis and avoid it yes like that works perfectly but then it's your health and the, he the health itself can be funny sometimes of course, yeah. you could actually like go through all these measures and then still end up getting down with something yeah. but just stay true to what you know you shouldn't do mm. like it, okay you have sickle cell anemia and of course you know that you are prone to having a chest congestion due to copd you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes mm. you don't have business smoking shisha you have sickle cell anemia and you know that you could easily get down with um, um an infection and it could be a kidney infection you don't have any business um drinking alcohol mm. do you get so those are some of those things that you know you should in fact relationship wise you have sickle cell anemia and you are in an abusive relationship what will you do you should leave True. Yes. so those are the things like they are not it's not rocket science if if you adhere strictly to to things that you know mm. will push you to get a crisis of course you'd you'd live healthy okay you'd live healthy so what about what about um exercising would you would you encourage someone with with the sickle cell to go to the gym mm. considering there are lots of weights extensive cardio would you encourage that now um exercise is not something um anybody should just hit the gym because you want to exercise yeah that is why we have exercise physiologists mm -hmm. so if you want to exercise and you're living with sickle cell yes ask your doctor ask your physiotherapist okay? so they could recommend like um it's funny when people think oh so i did this and i lost weight and it works for everybody mm. no there are like a lot of things that's why i said we have exercise physiologists yes the job as a, of an exercise physiologist is to is to look at you mm -hmm. like um know your your health history mm -hmm. and then ad, like recommend just like the way a doctor will describe a drug yeah an exercise physiologist will also tell you what kind of exercise is good for you your physiotherapist can also tell you what type of exercise is good for you okay so 
it, it going to the gym will actually also help keeps you it helps keep you healthy and sane mm -hmm. and all that but then don't just go because you want to lift weights because you you should ask your doctor's advice okay so what are they encouraged well to do you're just encouraged to live healthy like do basically. the right thing basically know what um, drives your crisis mm. and stay away from it it works see your doctor take your regular drugs that you're supposed to take mm. like if you follow that i'm, I'm sure like i'm 100 yes. percent sure you would you would you would you do good yeah. yeah and then what advice what would you advise people living with sickle cell anemia to do what would you advise what's your advice for them my advice for people living with sickle cell anemia is that um so uh, um, it can actually get really, really um, depressing mm. to have that type of condition because they get stigmatized. Like people living with sickle cell anemia, they're dealing with stigma. Like mm -hmm. people just look at people and think um, um, it's okay to just talk down on them because of their condition. Well, they yes. didn't make themselves. No. And if they had to choose, nobody deserves to live with sickle cell anemia. Yes. So on my own part, um, I always advise that they stay positive. Mm -hmm. You stay on the positive because um, your 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 mind, body, and soul they all work together. Mm -hmm. So if if you try to be more on the positive side, mm -hmm. there's nobody anything can say to you. True. Sure. Like recently, there was an ad outburst on social media, and um, someone says to someone. Um, when you get your your sickled body out of it was really something mm. and the person goes oh so you think in this age and era you would insult me and i will feel bad yeah. like no i didn't make myself i didn't so like mindsets like that True. actually help like um help your mood a lot yes. like and it's common with everyone if you're battling with something and you you're like okay do you know what I know I'm going to live with this for the rest of my life and man, I don't, I'm not bothered. Sure. So anybody anything wants to say to you, you just look at the person like you're even the one that doesn't know what you're doing. Just have the right attitude. Yeah, just have the right, right, have the right attitude and um, a good approach towards life and I'm sure it will, it will help. Oh, yeah. this has been so helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. But for the sake of those who weren't able to join us from the beginning of the show, can you please give us a rundown on sickle cell anemia? Okay. Uh, so basically what we've just um, spoken about from the beginning is that um, sickle cell anemia is a disease of the blood. It's a genetic disease. So you don't get it from, um, you don't contact it. Nope. Um, you don't get it from mosquito bites. You don't get it. You're giving birth to with it. So you get it from your mom and your dad. Now, uh, lately too on social media, we've been having discussions about paternity fraud and all that. Mm. So if you have sickle cell anemia, believe me, it's not your mom only that gave it to you or your dad. It has to be your mom and your dad because they made you mm. and you got it from them. And um, there are a lot of risk factors that are involved in people living with sickle cell anemia because it's really affects your quality of life so you end up having like lots of crises and that crisis is the most um, difficult thing ever in someone living with sickle cell anemia like um the pain for a crisis has been likened to um pain of childbirth because pain of childbirth is like and the threshold of pain like is the highest um it's like breaking all your bones at the same time at mm. that point you're willing to give birth you're you're trying to give birth and then the pain from a crisis in sickle cell anemia has been likened to that. So you should oh. know that it is actually painful. Yes. And you wouldn't even wish even your enemy, like, that condition. Yes. If you've been to the hospital and you've seen someone with sickle cell anemia in crisis, like, you break down. Because the Absolutely. pain is just so there and you cannot even describe it. So nobody deserves that type of pain. And all we're trying to say now is, we should all just know our genotypes because it will help. Prevention is better than cure. Like, it's better you prevent it from the beginning. So if you don't know your genotype, the best thing to do is please just walk into a hospital. Mm. I, it doesn't even cost much. In some government hospitals, it's like um, 300, 500. Mm. I don't know. The most expensive I've seen so far is a thousand naira. So why not just save your children's future sure. and know your genotype than bring a child into the world and the child keeps suffering and suffering and suffering. And also, if you're watching this and you have sickle cell anemia, I'll I'll beg you 
don't always wait till you have a crisis before you can go to the hospital like go to the hospital sign up there's a clinic for people living with sickle cell anemia mm. just go make sure you keep your appointment like see your doctors and when you go in you may you might be 100 percent healthy now and you're down with crisis the next minute so just go to the hospital maintain regular checkups mm. and then take your regular routine drugs because people living with sickle cell anemia have regular routine drugs that actually help improve their quality of life so go to the hospital and take your drugs when you need to take mm. it and believe me you'll be fine personally my friends have sickle cell anemia there are three the parents gave her to three of them and mm. all three of them have sickle cell anemia and the eldest is about 30 something and he's doing good and yeah. he's living healthy so like there, there's nothing anybody can tell you that because you have this condition you are condemned no yes. and lastly nigerians should learn to love people for who they are like sure. someone living with sickle cell anemia does not deserve the stigma don't be insensitive again don't be insensitive to people's pain don't be be kind in fact the world is getting tougher and tougher yeah. so the least you can do to anybody is just to be kind and if someone lives with sickle cell anemia then you have to be kinder if that's english at all <laughs> you have to be kinder to yes. them because you don't know the constant pain they are going through True. you don't know the constant stigma i've seen wed weddings get cancelled because yes yes not even yes yes because the, the, the lady has sickle cell and the the parents of the groom are like we cannot afford this baggage uh, so no it's not going to work yes i've seen it also got in council because oh the guy has sickle cell so uh, do you want to become a widow on time so mm. like those are common things like people you sometimes you even say to someone without even like thinking about it but then it's a it's a lot yes and i would also like to say we should all be advocates so if you don't know what your status is i'm begging please just know your status and yeah. it will help you against the future so that's all true thank you so much Sala, for thank you finding for time me. to educate us on sickle cell anemia i hope you'll join us another time in the studio yeah hopefully if you invite me i'll come absolutely well we've come to the end of today's edition of health matters please join us same time next week for another i still remain your host amina hamaza have a wonderful evening <laughs>